Hi, I'm Julia. And I'm Sue. And welcome to Sticks and Stones. Today on Sticks and Stones, we're going to talk about spinning. Julia's going to show you some of the stuff she picked up at Rhinebeck and some of the projects she's been working on. And Sue is going to show off her mixed media painting. Join us. Welcome back. Welcome. I feel like it's been a while. It has been. We had that whole deal with blip. So It was a blip yeah. in the life <laughs> of our podcast. But we've gotten over it. Yes. There was laughing. There was crying. Yeah. There it was, was pounding the frustrating. floor. Frustrating. Yeah. I don't understand what their, what their deal is. But so be it. They can do what they want to do. And we are now on YouTube. And if you're watching this, you have found us. So thank you for coming back. We appreciate it. Yes. Um, but we are not going to be on iTunes for the foreseeable future because I don't think YouTube and iTunes talk to each other. So, what's that about? I don't know. Google and it's Google and Apple are fighting. <laughs> Why know. can't everyone just get along? <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. But so in the meantime, um, I apologize. There's nothing we can do about that. So until we decide to move to yet another platform, which hopefully won't be any time real soon, or things change, we won't be on iTunes. But sad, but yes, life goes on, right? Yes, but we'll be on the vlog. I embedded onto the vlog again, and I'm uploading all the past episodes onto YouTube, so you'll be able to see everything there, for sure. And I've got a new list of our episodes and links to the new site on the website and on Ravelry, so that you guys can find the old episodes. Because if you click you on worked them now, very hard to make all of this happen. Yeah, it's, it's getting there. I've only done three or four, but it's getting there, and hopefully we will find everybody coming back to visit. Hey, Julia. So. Your hard work. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it to talk to you lovely people <laughs> and hang out with Sue. That's right. Because <laughs> we need a break. Yes, our day. we do. At my house, we've been talking about... The puppy that's going to join us for today's episode. In my house, we've been talking a lot about dinosaurs. Really? And I see that you made some dinosaur pictures. I did. Is this what you did? Um, when you uh, did? <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, my, we've been very into prehistoric everything around here lately. Dinosaurs. And so you'd think, you'd think that I would have had to put a dinosaur on the sweater this year. But I did because, of course, the six-year-old drew this. But instead, I no, had to make... yours. It's okay. You can tell people. <laughs> When the color is so pretty, cool. you color dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, I made a puppy sweater. That's so cute. I love it, love it, yeah. love it. And I used a couple different colors of fabric, kinds of fabric to make the face and the nose. It's fun. Yeah. So it turned out really cute. The only thing I need to do, um, because I made the rib really small, the black part small, it rolls up. Mm -hmm. And I don't need it looking any smaller because I'd like him to wear it for a while. So I need to... Um, put a little more rib down here, like add an inch to the bottom, and that will make it last longer. But I think it turned out really cute. My son has several sweaters that were hand knit by his grandparents, mm -hmm. and he always says, "Can't you just knit some more on the bottom?" So, yeah. Well, sometimes you sometimes can. Sometimes you can, but you know when the sleeves are up to here yeah. <laughs> and the sweaters up to here, it's just really time for a new sweater. Yeah. Yeah. I figured because this one, it's it just annoys me when I watch him wear it and it folds up and it looks like it's too short. So I'm gonna fix that. But the sweater turned out really cute. Yeah, it's so cute with the puppy. Yeah, just a simple raglan. So, so no dinosaurs, just puppies. Puppies. For that. Hey, he had a pretty simple order this year. Yeah. Oh, and Legos. Legos. That's the other thing I made for him. These, these are, are so funny. I can't wear them because they're too small. But these are the Lego yeah, magnets. Because I, I have little tiny hands. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> They're, they're a, it's a pattern I found on Ravelry that the mitts actually look like Lego hands, and I just thought they were so hysterical. I am a Lego person. Isn't that funny? <laughs> See, I can wear them. <laughs> That's the small one, too. Yeah, turn it this way <laughs> so everybody can see. I just thought they were cute. So, so don't I move, honey? I don't have all my joints now. <laughs> you can turn your face around when you have a new expression. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Speed that part up so it looks like my head's so, Hi everybody! I'm going to play with a sword! <laughs> <laughs> I can't so pick up that. my iPhone because it's not round! <laughs> Legos! <laughs> everywhere! <laughs> no, 
Lego. I mean, we had a Lego birthday party, so I made them Lego mittens. They're too. hilarious. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Love yeah. it. Love it. So those are the big things that I made. Or you can make puppy shows. Hi, I'm Sue. Hi, so, well, I'm Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sticks and Stones. We well, didn't we do this before with socks? I guess I did. <laughs> Yeah, you can't you can't take the inner six year old out of this one. <laughs> Man. Oh gosh. Well that's what I've done. The, the birthday's over. <laughs> and now I move on to Christmas. And I've got stuff in the works, but you nothing you guys have want to see. Onslaught of just one holiday after another. Yeah. For you guys. In the fall. It's pretty bad. It, well not bad. It's fun, but it is. It's October, November, December, just bam, 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 bam. And in the middle of it all is my birthday. So I would like one of these days, somebody will make something for me. <laughs> I'll show you what I got though later. Ooh, can't wait. Yeah, it's an early birthday present. Okay, so you, what have you been doing? Well, I went to that mixed media painting class and I made this. Ooh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi, <I'm done>. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not finished. Maybe we should put it behind us. Oh, yeah, okay. It's a lot bigger than I thought from the picture. Well, we did we did a big one and we did a little one. We actually had a choice. Okay. This is my little one. Oh, cool. And honestly, neither of them are done. Okay. Um, it was a really fun class. So we just, uh, the instructor brought a whole bunch of different fun tools to mm -hmm. play with and gave us some real basic instruction and then we went to work. Okay. And of course, like any class, there was never enough time. Yeah. And I mean, she didn't really expect us to finish. There were people in the class who did finish. Um, this is actually horse oh, hair yeah. on this painting. Oh, yeah. That's of cool. Course, uh, it looks like so this one eyelashes. Was, oh, yeah, it does. Oh, see, I was going for a peacock feather, but I didn't see oh. it as an eyeball. There's a peacock feather that way. If you go oh. this way, like that to me just looks like an eye. You're right, it does. Like see, I want to put more on here so it looks more like a peacock feather, the way it's yeah. all wispy. Um, so this one was had an actual concept to it of That's this cool. is what I wanted to do, and um, this one was more experimenting with all different techniques. They both were. So you know, I use magic marker. There's um, uh, tissue paper on here. Oh. This is deer antler. Um, this is from a book. This we did. I did a roller, and then I colored in some of the circles. Mm. And this in here, it's you probably can't see this on the video, but. This in here, it's all textured, and I painted and then put saran wrap on it and let it dry and oh, pulled it off. Oh, and, wow. Um, yeah, so it's not done. Um, and actually, when you look at this from far away, it's hard to see all the details. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, I think it looks better close up. It's, it's a painting to be experienced it's very cool. close up and personal. Yeah. And then I did this one as well. We also did some, some of the stuff right here where the paint is missing was you spray it with uh, rubbing alcohol and it starts to make the paint kind of oh, bubble wow. off. Huh. And, and, um, I had that experience on a wall once. Really? In my house. Yeah, that somebody didn't remove wallpaper properly and it made the paint that I put over top of it bubble up and come off. So oh, that's, that's really cool that you know you can actually do it purposefully. Yeah, yeah, that's when neat. you want to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was enough. So, <laughs> yeah, so it was fun. We, like, we just learned about doing different layers. I mean, this is maybe like four different layers. Mm -hmm. This one only has three layers. Um, there's not a set number of layers That's you have cool. to do. It's just like you keep working and the, the artist Christine um, said that sometimes she will take paintings to you know an art fair or something yeah. and if they don't sell like she is out a couple of times and it doesn't sell, she'll take it back and keep working on it. Oh, that's interesting. You just so. redo it and put something in Yeah, so you just keep, you know, because you know, cool. the, the age old question is, when are you done? Right. She's like, you're done when you feel like you can't add anything. So then you just let it sit for a while and then maybe someday you're like, you know what? I do need to add something. Huh. So, so you take this off the board then eventually? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, it's on there just for painting. So we had the option of using this. There was a smaller piece of paper that was about this big we could use or the canvas. Yeah. And um, some people completed one, two, three items. I worked on several. Good. So good. it I'm, was so fun. Yeah. But, but the result of it actually was this. Oh, okay. And so this is um, one of my friends organized um, a birthday for someone. And we went to this, paint, this place called Rowie's Painting Place in Bethlehem, near the Hotel Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And it's one of these places where you go, um, you can bring wine, you can bring food. 
but you paint. And so there's an instructor up front, which is Rowie, yeah. and she shows you how to paint something. So the whole concept was you're painting an orange pumpkin on a peach background. Okay. But after having taken this class, this, we went on this little birthday excursion about a week or two after I'd gone to the painting mm -hmm. class. And so um, the paintings were, you know, they were neat, but I was like, I really don't want to paint an orange pumpkin. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I don't have to paint an orange pumpkin. Because after doing this class and experimenting with different techniques and different ways of doing stuff, yeah. I just kind of decided to do my own thing. And I'm really excited with how it turned out. It's I really think nice. it looks really neat. Yeah. So this I used, um, you know, the the end of the paintbrush to make all these lines. Oh, cool. Okay. And, I don't know um, if you guys can see that or not. The swirlies up there. So, and yeah, so the final painting that everybody else did was an orange pumpkin on a peach background mm. with uh, a plant that had um, flowers on it. Okay. And I thought, you know, I don't really want to do flowers. So yeah. I did these blackberries instead. And it looks really good for this time of year. Like, uh, things are kind of, it's not that it's dead, but it's not bright and fresh anymore right. either. Right. Yeah, that's really neat. So it was a neat class though. I, I didn't realize it was going to be so public. I thought we were doing this privately. We walk in and it's a room full of, you know, 30 people all with oh, easels cool. and paint and painting and, you know, we're all chatting. Yeah. And, and so it was a lot of fun. I would definitely do that again because it was just, it was so much fun. You know, just being there with friends, and you would, she would tell you, you know, this is how you, this is the brush you use to make these big lines, this is the brush you use to do this, this is the technique I use, but it wasn't, you have to do this. Yeah. She showed you how to make it. Some of the people follow the directions to a T, and they have not the exact same painting as her, because, yeah. you know, everybody's painting's different, but they have the same picture that she is. She put a border around it with okay. little dots and stuff. Um, and then some people kind of experimented a little bit more. Our group tended to, as is expected, to have <laughs> completely different things than everyone else. That's right. That's so, right. They turned, it turned out really nice. It did. It did. I liked That's the fun. bright blue and stuff. So. Very cool. So I was glad I took the class because it gave me the, the, the permission, I guess, yeah. to go paint outside the lines. Yeah. That's a hard thing, I think, sometimes to, to kind of break out from that mold and, and make it your own, you know, right. like we just want to follow the pattern or follow the instructions. And so that's good, that's a good skill to have. Yes, so it was, a, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So you were at Rhinebeck. Yes, I did. I went to the festival and I'm not sure if I met any of you guys in particular there, but I did meet a lot of people. So it was, it was really fun to kind of walk around and, and the house I stayed in was really nice. The people were very, very nice. The food was really good. The, you know, the vendors, it was, it's a fun trip. It's a really fun trip. So I brought back some stuff, and I'm, I am now going to show you guys some of the things I got. I didn't buy a ton, and I didn't buy um, just standard things. Like, I went looking for stuff that I knew I didn't have, and I couldn't get here. So, um, so I'll show you. I'll start with the yarn. I um, This one, I don't know if you guys will be able to tell or not, but it's color changing. Um, Is it mood yarn? Kind of. It's called Moose Manor Hand Paints, um, and it's a limited edition Mystical Moose series. And in, in different light, it goes from having like a red hue to kind of a bluish greenish hue. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, I'm looking at it in our monitor, and it's um, it's more reddish, but here it's green. Yeah, it is. It's well, it's called River Moss, right? And it does definitely look like River Moss, but then in in here it's reddish. Yeah, so it's really interesting. And she had a light set up so you could put it under the light and see how it changed. So That's I picked cool. that up just because it's something I, that I don't normally have. And then I found some tweed sock yarn, and I don't think I've ever seen tweed before in a sock yarn. But this, I just thought the colors were really fun, and mm -hmm. and um, it'll be something different. You know, that's again that was kind of my point, just to do something different. So See, I you are breaking that. out of that. I doing guess everything. a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I tend to not be too out of the box. The only thing I think that I got that was a repeat was actually from this girl because she's, I really like her dyeing. It's from Bittersweet Woolery. And this is called the Knight's Templar color. Um, I've been very into this like burgundy ish pink gray combination. I've kind of found myself walking around. You need to get like a color of the year. Last year I was teal. This year it's this color. <laughs> So, I got that, um, and going along with the theme, see there it is again, <laughs> but this time with browns instead of with gray, um, and this is Into the World 
It's called Rambutan, and it's a Falkland wool, which is, uh, I haven't spun Falkland before. So What's this is kind Falkland? Of it's a breed of sheep. Huh. There's a lot of different kinds of sheep. Like this one is made from, uh, let me see if I can find it. Blue faced Leicester sheep. Is that why it's blue? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're horrible. I take her so seriously, and I was like, no. Does it come off the sheep just like this? No. <laughs> Luckily, it's soft. And this one's merino. It's merino sheep. I know what merino is. Yeah, and this one is, again, it's blue face, leicester, and silk. But then how did it turn orange? <laughs> box purchase. This is a one-of-a-kind carded bat from Spinner's Hill. Um, it is Merino Cordial Fin Rambouillet all together and it's got like a thousand colors in it. It's all mixed together. Wow. So I have no idea what this is going to turn out like but I I think it would be so fun it. to make it into a wig. <laughs> That's hair. funny. It really does, actually, now that she says it. <laughs> but it's really cool. The colors are really fun. And I'm, I'm, I don't know how I'm going to spin it yet, but this is going to be an interesting challenge. Do you me. ever open these up and find something inside that you weren't expecting? Yeah. I, I don't mean like bugs. I mean like a cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's stuff in there that that I don't know about yet. Yeah. I mean, it's all. It looks like she just. Oh yeah, because it's she, so dark um, there. She probably just carded it in a drum carter and then wrapped it oh, up. Oh, there's black. Yeah, yeah, actually there's black and blue inside. Huh. It's not on the outside. So how do you spin this then? Do you just start here or you pull pieces off? You pull off? pieces off. So you could, yeah. if you wanted it's to. It's totally different inside than outside. The way you pull it, like you could pull all the purples and do all purple at one time and then yeah. change the color or you could just pick randomly and it would be different colors. Yeah, probably. And also the way, like if I. Now you know it looks like a beer is here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but you could do well, it like, if you do it in a two ply or a three ply, it'll change the way it looks. You shouldn't so. do anything with it because it's so entertaining. Uh, I'm just rolling my eyes at you now. <laughs> and See, then, I'm not a spinner, so I have to I find other things to do with this stuff. <laughs> I got this one from In the World too, and it's called Odds and Ends, and it's just a whole bunch of little tiny balls of, of, of wool. Of fiber. So there's, and they're different colors. So it's kind of fun to pull these out. You can make like one long skein with it or you can make a little skeins and play with it. Or you can juggle. You can juggle it. You can play with styles. You can, really juggle you can throw it at your friend. <laughs> this would be like an indoor snowball battle. The whole group of us that was staying in the house together um, bought these. And so the, the night we were there we were pulling them out and everybody was spinning them up and it was this just kind of fun to This makes me think of cotton candy with. and I want to eat it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> You get a lot of fuzz in your teeth. <laughs> yeah, that's fun though to have those little samples yeah. instead of having to do a whole big thing. Yeah, and when I was there, I I took a spinning class um, and I learned how to spin different uh, kinds of yarn. I've always been able to do just pretty much one standard thing, just sport weight, just straightforward. Whether it was a two ply or a three ply, it didn't matter. It was always pretty much the same. So I um, learned how to spin thick, and this is actually I mean some of it is really fat. Some of it. It's really beautiful. Um, but it was really fun. This is probably a bulky weight, and I only got like 60 yards out of it, but it was really fun to try. And it's out. really, really beautiful. You did such a great Thank job you. on that. I'll show you guys a little bit of how, what they told me to do. I'm not going to give all the secrets away because, you know, it was a, it was a class and all, but, um, but it was neat to be able to learn how to, how to manipulate the wheel to do something different, and, and that, so that was really fun for me. So can you take from that and do other things as well then? or Yeah. So you learned how to to wheel it, do a wheelie. <laughs> yeah. to do, so you can t apply it to different weights then. Yes, yeah, so I can do thick now, I can do thinner, and then this is my most recent spinning thing. I, I'll give it away. I got a new wheel for my birthday. Poppin' wheelies. She's yeah. been poppin' wheelies all week. <laughs> I had an Ashford Traveler have still, which I really like, um, but the new one is an Ashford Kiwi, and it came with a high-speed 
whirl, which means it spins faster and you can make a thinner yarn. So I went from that really thick stuff to this little teeny, teeny, skinny, you probably can't even see it from here, skinny, skinny um, three ply. So I'm really excited that I can now do both ends of the spectrum and not just and you did such a good job on this. It's so consistent. Yeah, I was really happy with it. Really? I mean, it's so, almost all of them are the same. That's really impressive. Thank you. It's a little bit overspun. You can see like in there, it's got all these curly cues because I'm not really good at, I just don't know this wheel yet. And I haven't washed this yet either. When Does you, that come out and you knit them when it's overspun or not? It, to an extent, um, like you can see, it's just a little bit overspun. If I were to wash this, which I haven't done yet, and then you go and you flick it a whole bunch and you let it dry and you hold a weight on it if you want to, it'll straighten some of that mm -hmm. out just by the memory of the fiber. Um, and then when you knit it, what happens if it's overspun is sometimes it can make your, your fabric bias. So if you're making a sweater, you're, it'll twist as it goes and you don't necessarily want seams twisted. Um, but for something, like if I were to make another cowl or something with it, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. See, this kind of yarn makes me want to knit. It's fun to do the rustic stuff and to know that you know you've gone from point A to point B and can really make something the way you want it to be and not just what you find at a store. So I'm going to show you guys kind of how to do some of this today on my new wheel. Awesome, Yay. that'll be fun. And so we'll be right back to show you. So these are my two wheels. These are both Ashfords and they're from New Zealand. This is my original wheel. It's a traveler and um, this is the new one. It's a Kiwi. I'm very excited to have a multiple number of wheels to play with for at least a little while before we decide what to do with this one. Um, but the differences here and partially why I wanted to, to move to the Kiwi is um, first of all, this is a single treadle versus a double treadle. You can see this has one pedal versus two. And I think with a double treadle, you get a little more um, ability to stop and start quickly. So you don't have to put so much effort into stopping and starting and you can make your yarn maybe a little more consistent that way. Um, plus this one, um, it's a double drive, which is very good in many ways, except that uh, I think with the, with the tension, I was not able to use my scotch tension quite as well, what Scotch Tension does is it gives you some really minute adjustments on how fast the yarn is pulled into the wheel and how quickly the um, wheel versus the flyer move against each other. So you can do some more um, adjustments with this and I was not able to figure out how to use it to its full extent here. We're here, it's my only option, so I have to learn how. So that's gonna be a new thing for me. Um, so those are the two differences. Obviously they're different in style. This one's much more modern than this. Um, uh, but other than that, oh, and this one has a lazy cape built in down here where mine does, this one does not. So other than that though, they work pretty much the same. And I'm gonna show you with this one, um, some basic spinning. So this is the flyer that comes with this wheel. And I have two whirls they're called. Um, I have the regular whirl, the standard one, and this is the high speed one. The difference is obviously this one is smaller, so it'll give you a different ratio um, with the wheel and will help you to spin smaller yarn. So I'm gonna use this one today, but this is what you would get if you were to purchase a wheel like this. When you set up the wheel with this particular model, you take the end and put it into this little hole here after you pull up your drive band and then you just pop it in to the other end. You'll move your drive band on to the whirl and then you take the scotch tension brake, which is this wire here. It's attached with a couple of springs and you hook this underneath. There's a knob on this other side that you will turn just a little bit until your spring starts to stretch. Right there. So that's all there is for setting up. I have a leader that I put onto the bobbin and with this you just pull it across here, use your little hook and pull it through this hole. Let me slide this up a little bit and out through what's called the orifice. My leader is a little bit short, I should probably get a longer one for the future. Try that again.
and now your wheel is set up to spin. I opened up one of those little balls that I got out of my odds and ends bag and I'm going to spin a bit of this for you today. What you'll do is you'll take your wool <clears throat> and you just pull off a little bit of the end to make it slightly thinner and you're going to loop this through this loop here. I don't know if this is standard practice but this is what I do and it works really well for me so I just kind of pull it together and then overlap it down below. With the double treadle you'll put feet on both treadles and you want to have your flyer spinning clockwise. So I'm going to get going. Oops. Sometimes it takes a few tries. And I'm still new at this wheel so forgive me. Wrong way, right way. There we go. And now you'll see it's spinning. So I'm going to start to pull my wool out and you can see the twist is coming down. As you're pulling the yarn out, it's much like the drop spindle where you pull out a little bit and then let the twist catch up. Your wheel, if it's set properly, which mine was not initially but is now, will pull the yarn in onto the bobbin without a whole lot of effort. I'm making a pretty thin yarn right now, which is really much easier to do with this high speed whirl. But what I learned and what I thought was pretty cool is how you can change the size of your um, fiber that you're creating without a whole lot of adjustments. So right now you see it's pretty thin and I've got some on to the bobbin up here that's pretty thin. I'm going to make it thicker now and what you do there is you, you start to pull out a wider amount of wool. So I spun a little bit and you can see the difference here. The blue is much thicker than the yellow. The yellow was my first and then the blue I did later and the only difference I've made here is um, in how I was Pulling, drafting the fiber. I drafted more fiber per pull than I did um, with the yellow. It's pretty easy to change that, I found. The, the basic idea is you need to slow down your feet when you're making a thicker yarn. And, or slow, not slow down your feet, but slow down your hands. So you're pulling slower to get a little bit thicker of a draw and then letting it slide back versus when you're making a thinner one you want to pull a little bit quicker and I'm going to start to treadle now so you guys can see the difference. Stop and start, hold on. Woo! Okay, so now I'm pulling a little quicker and my yarn has moved to thinner again. Now I'm going to slow down my hands and see if I can make it thicker. I can pull a little bit extra and it makes a slightly thicker yarn. I'm going to try to make it really thick just so you guys can see the exaggeration here. My feet are pretty much staying the same, but you can tell as we're going along here that my fiber has changed. I just overspun that quite a bit, but you can see that's a lot thicker than it was when I started. So just changing the speed of your hands can really change the speed of, or the, the type of fiber that you're going to end up getting type of fiber, type of yarn. I'm falling over my words today, please forgive me. So hopefully you will be inspired to do a little spinning yourself and we would love to see what kind of things you guys come up with. I might just have to go home and use the drop spindle. Yeah, or you could play with one of these if you wanted to. It's kind of fun. Only I knew somebody who had one. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a contest running on the Ravelry group and you can leave con or comments on the blog as well for some um, paper bead items. I finished the earrings, not that it was that hard, but I put a several layers of Mod Podge mm -hmm. on these and they're really hard. It's really cool. Yeah, so they're really neat looking. They, so that'll be a fun thing. Fun. And then you'll get the other person will get stitch markers that are made from paper beads from me. So if you have not yet joined in that, all we're asking is for you to tell us what you're working on for Christmas and then we'll do that uh, drawing at the end of the month. Yes. So you can put it on, you said Ravelry, mm -hmm. or on our blog. On the blog, sticksandstonespodcast.wordpress.com. That is all the same from before, nothing's changed there. That's so. good. And you can subscribe to YouTube in case uh, that's easier for you. You can do a subscription there and it will automatically tell you when new podcasts are uploaded. Oh, fun. Yeah. I'll have to do that. It'll be a little bit easier than searching for it. I'm a time. YouTube newbie. <laughs> so am I. I don't use it very often. <laughs> and you can watch us on a big screen TV now, which is kind of frightening to me, but so don't do that. You might want to keep it on a little Do it on your computer. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you learned a little bit of something about mixed media and spinning and all that good stuff. 
Yes. And we'll see you again. Soon, in, hopefully. In a few weeks. Yeah, good luck on all your uh, holiday gifts that you're, I'm sure you're making right now. Mm -hmm. And for American friends, happy Thanksgiving. Yes. See you soon. Bye. Bye. It took a little while, <laughs> but I think you got the hang of it now. We'll see, because I just added some new stuff, so we'll see if I can. How long have you been spinning for now, Sue? Um, about three minutes. <laughs> Maybe six. No, I guess it took me, well, actually spinning, I've been doing it for about two minutes, but, you know, making a big mess, it's been about a half hour. We had to change the whirl and change the brake and learn how to get the rhythm of the hands and feet, but, what, so half an hour and you're doing really well now. I am, because you know what? With a little bit of roving, you can change the whirl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. That sounds like a bumper sticker. I think we should make knitting bumper stickers like that. Oh, so, all right. <laughs> time to go. But I want to keep spinning because it's so much fun. <laughs> okay, now I'm now I'm messing it up. <laughs> there's alarms. There's phones going off. I can't remember what I'm doing. All right, I gotta stop and I gotta pull this out a little bit. So then I can do better. Look at me go. I'm awesome. <laughs>